When it comes to horror on the 3DS, your options are somewhat limited. Sure, there's the likes of Resident Evil and Spirit Camera to fill the void, but one game that sadly never got the recognition it deserved is quite possibly one of the best examples of the genre on the handheld. It's essentially a remake of the DS classic and brings with it a whole host of upgrades. As the player, you fill the role of William Redmore as he awakes in a mysterious abandoned hospital. The bleak, empty halls look fantastic on the small screen and manage to create a real sense of dread as you make your way through the facility. Not only are the halls of the ward mazes in themselves, but exploration is key to finding clues to open a locked door, a case, or just a means to survive. Now it's not long before you encounter the several enemies that roam the complex, which all look equally as disturbing with their odd, deformed bodies that pulse and create a level of disgust not often found in other titles of the same nature. Combat is a huge part of the game, and luckily you have many options at your disposal when it comes to tackling each threat. There's a whole host of melee and range-based weapons that make each encounter all the more manageable. But if there is one aspect that really steals the show, it has to be the sound design. Listening out for enemies plays a huge role, and around every turn you'll be presented with disturbing noises that will make you pause and proceed with caution. The atmosphere it creates is bound to keep you on your toes, especially when wearing headphones, and if I'm being honest, this is the best way to play Dementium. Ever since the first iteration on the PlayStation 1, the Driver series has constantly evolved and introduced many new aspects that make up its gameplay. In the beginning though, Driver was simply about driving. There was no GTA-inspired mechanics, such as being able to explore on foot or engage with enemies using weapons, and with Driver Renegade, the decision was made to get back to basics. Now one aspect of the game that will strike many are the visuals. Driver Renegade is quite impressive on the handheld screen, and exploring the virtual recreation of New York City is an absolute joy. That's not even mentioning the 3D effect that is really put to great use in driving games like this, where depth is a real good measure of speed and the game keeps flowing on at a steady frame rate. Now there's two different game modes to get stuck into. You've got your story as well as career. In the story mode there are 20 missions separated by cutscenes and these missions can range from different tasks like getting to a specific point within a time limit, destroying newspaper stands across the city, or chasing down and ramming an enemy car to make could stop and even just surviving an onslaught of enemies trying to ram you off the road, and most of them can be finished in a matter of minutes. This makes it perfect for pick up and play sessions, but it's not all rainbows and lollipops though, as one of the staple modes is glaringly absent, that being the take a ride mode which has always been included in some form or another throughout the years. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but something that needs to be mentioned nonetheless. Now the 3DS isn't well known for its range of fighting games, but out of the handful that eventually released on the console, one of the most overlooked games has to be Dead or Alive Dimensions. Now the first aspect that will strike many are the incredible visuals. Team Ninja did a bang up job of bringing the game to Nintendo's handheld, and nothing was compromised in the process. Each character and location pops to life on the 3D screen, with it all resulting in one of the most graphically impressive games on the console. Matching the level of visual quality is the gameplay itself. As you would expect, there's a generous roster of characters that all offer their own distinct flavor, with each of them possessing a string of basic attacks as well as unique special abilities that make playing through each of them essential. But it's not only your moves that can affect the outcome of a battle. What soon became a staple of the series proudly makes a return for the 3DS game, environmental damage. When fighting on a specific point of the arena, it's possible to trigger this ability and send your opponent hurtling down below, which not only results in a ton of damage, but a change of scenery once executed. This aspect alone adds a sense of excitement not often found with Dead or Alive's competitors, and it's great to see it in action in Dimensions. Like I said earlier, there's not that many options when it comes to fighters on the handheld, so if you're looking to get into one, Dead or Alive Dimensions offers up one of the best ways to enjoy some martial arts action on the go. Nano Assault is a rather unique shooter that all takes place at the microscopic level. There are two different types of levels. Firstly, you'll find yourself on the ground and exploring small shaped structures that are occupied by enemies, with the other seeing you fly through the air in a somewhat Panzer Dragoon-esque fashion as you tackle each threat head on. Now the controls were rather simple, but that is the beauty of it. You have full control of your ship with the circle pad, with the face buttons controlling your projectiles. But instead of it being mapped to one button, the direction of your shot depends on which button you press. For example, to shoot up, you'll have to hit X, or press two buttons at the same time to perform a diagonal shot. 
It's a really great system which helps Nano Assault stand out amongst many of the shooters on the 3DS. The enemies themselves come in many varieties, but essentially they all try to take you out in a similar fashion. The arsenal of regular enemies is pretty limited, but at least that doesn't take away from having to dodge or destroy several of them at once. Now the boss stages are much more engaging and require some quick and agile dodging skills. Despite the limited amount of foes and their attacks, how they are thrown at you in the different situations and locations is done extremely well, well enough to create some variety throughout the 32 different stages of the game. If you're a fan of the genre and are looking for something new to get into, Nano Assault is a great option. Sedemol centers around a hero on a quest to conquer, redeem an uprising, and ultimately to bring peace to the land. In order to do so, you get to choose from four separate classes that each bring their own attributes to the table. The diversity in gameplay on offer is a real standout feature of the game, and adds an immense amount of replay value to the experience. What makes the game even better is the light sprinkle of RPG elements that make up the several systems. You'll find yourself leveling up and learning new abilities, as well as acquiring new and interesting armor and equipment that will help level the playing field. Now your loadout plays a huge role and really contributes to your effectiveness on the field. If you make a bad choice when it comes to the situation at hand, it is lights out. These items specifically come in handy during the more intricately designed boss encounters. There's several throughout the game, which all increase in difficulty and manage to provide a real challenge to the player. The basic combat itself revolves around performing strings of combos and throwing in your unique abilities to create an unstoppable wave of damage. With the amount of enemies that can appear at any one time, it's a good idea to settle on a few tried and trusted strings that are guaranteed to get you out of trouble. But therein lies one main issue with the game. The combat can become incredibly repetitive because of it. It slowly starts to feel like Dynasty Warriors minus its strategy, and that may have the potential to annoy some that play it. It's not a terrible game by any stretch. The various systems that make up the gameplay are masterfully employed, but the minute minute combat may leave a sour taste in your mouth. If there were three words to sum up Rhythm Heaven Megamix, it would have to be what the fuck. The somewhat odd and comical appearance of the game is bound to turn some players away, but for those that stick around, it's a collection of extremely eccentric minigames that all come together to offer a pretty robust package. Now the gameplay of RHM centers on rhythm, in which you press buttons to the beat of a song. These minigames vary both in terms of playstyle and music, with some of them having you follow simple cues that go along with the song, whilst others ask you to keep a steady beat throughout. All are easy to learn and require very simple button presses or taps, which opens it up to all ages and skill levels. Now all of the activities are fairly short, with the average song lasting about 1-2 to two minutes. These bite-sized intervals are perfect for quick portable sessions. Part of what makes RHM stand out is the quirky nature of the rhythm games themselves. Each of them has a unique premise that drives the rhythm forward, and some of them are just plain ridiculous, but I can guarantee they will put a smile on your face. Overall, RHM is a highly entertaining game. With its huge range of modes and increasing difficulty, it's bound to keep those that play it busy for hours on end. Fantasy Life is an extremely underrated RPG. On the surface, it looks pretty simple, and it no doubt contributed to its muted success, but hiding underneath is one of the most robust and rewarding experiences on the handheld. As the player, you take up the fight as a completely customizable character of your own creation. The sheer amount of options is a welcome addition. Now gameplay-wise, Fantasy Life somewhat resembles Rune Factory, but is a little heavier on the action. The combat is in real time, almost Zelda-esque, but it's not overly complicated or even twitchy. Monsters and gathering nodes respawn so you can farm as much as you want. There are no real death penalties, which makes the game easy and unforgiving as well. But it's really all about leveling your jobs, unlocking recipes, doing challenges, crafting or finding the best equipment. Now crafting consists of interactive, reaction-based minigames, where you have to mash buttons as fast as you can, which also determines the quality of the items you create. They're all fairly samey, with exception of the fishing, but it still beats the usual click a button and check back a few minutes later that most other games of this type possess. For me, Fantasy Life is one of the best on the system. It came out of the blue and was a complete surprise upon its release, with its in-depth mechanics and addictive gameplay. If you're fond of the likes of Rune Factory or similar games of that nature, but always wish they were a bit heavier on the action, Fantasy Life will deliver. 
Dylan the Armadillo made his debut back in 2012 in a rather obscure and often overlooked eShop exclusive Rolling Western. The odd mix of exploration, interactive action sequences and weirdly enough tower defense made it one of the most odd but intriguing releases on the handheld. Fast forward a few years later and Dylan returned in what is quite possibly the defining adventure of his career. It all begins with the player transforming their system me into an animal. Much like the first entry, there are several types of play that contribute to the overall adventure. The most exciting has to be the road sections that see you transforming into a vehicle and hitting the highways. During these sections you have a multitude of abilities at your disposal, such as several takedowns and a deadly finisher that can flatten the enemy in a flash. But it doesn't end here. You'll find yourself exploring the town which is comprised of a surprising amount of different environments, as well as taking on enemies in a variety of ways. Each battle is split up into several rounds, with each of them offering different ways to play. The first was resembles a tower defense game, with the last being a head-on assault, which allows you to utilize a whole range of weaponry. As you progress, you'll slowly level up and unlock more abilities and equipment that can make these encounters all the more engaging. This truly is one hell of a unique game, and if it passed you by back in the day, it is well worth going back and checking it out now. The 3DS was no stranger to incredible RPGs, but one that often gets sidelined is Little Battler's experience. It all centers around a young boy and his love for small, collectible models known as LBXs. Now the narrative is not going to win any awards, but it does actually become one of the more engaging parts of the adventure. The voice acting alone is delivered on par with the anime, and is bound to help captivate those that play and help draw them into the events that transpire. One aspect that steals the show though is the incredible range of armor, weapons, spells, special moves and finishes, there is an endless stream of customization options that make building each and every machine a real highlight. When it comes to gameplay, the entire adventure is largely split up into two different types. First off, you have exploration, which sees you traversing the city and coming into contact with a whole range of lovable NPCs. The second is the combat, and this is where things really start to heat up. It all revolves around one simple concept known as the tension meter. You use it to attack and dash, but if the meter starts running low, your proficiency in battle is really affected. Fortunately, several items that act as tension refills litter the arena, and this simple gameplay loop ends up preventing you from spamming attacks, which helps the gameplay from becoming too stale and in the long run adds a hint of strategy to the overall experience. All in all, LBX is a solid game that would make a perfect addition to any 3DS owner's collection. Of all the quality RPGs that the 3DS brought to the table, one of the most underappreciated adventures has to be The Legend of Legacy. Sure, it's not a perfect game, but there are several aspects that make it a compelling choice when looking for something new on the system. At the beginning, it introduces the player to three separate characters, one being the protagonist and the other two filling in as your companions. The entire adventure revolves around exploration and sees you setting out to fill out several areas of your map. This action will net you currency that can be used to spend on several types of equipment and weapons that all come into play during battle. The combat system itself is turn-based in nature, with the game doing a good job of not holding your hand, which adds a nice touch of discovery and difficulty to each encounter. Now, as this is a JRPG, there is bound to be some sort of growth system for these characters, but they're not necessarily levels like your typical JRPG, but rather your stats grow randomly, similar to the likes of Final Fantasy II. This may have the potential to turn some people off due to the lack of complete control over a character's growth, and in all honesty, this may be one of the reasons why the game didn't do that well upon its release. Putting that aside though, The Legend of Legacy does offer up a great adventure, and is bound to satisfy those looking for a new RPG to get into, as long as you can look past some of its shortcomings. Well that does it for today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe and tickle that bell, follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos, as well as to take part in giveaways. You can also join our growing community on Discord and meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters as well, Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find the links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.